Hello and welcome to the next video in this series made for 24 hour answers where we look at becoming a better programmer. This time we're going to build on all our previous work and look at how to create a simple sorting algorithm in order to give us a good first step into looking at more complex and efficient algorithms. The sorting algorithm that we're going to look at, much like our search algorithm last time, isn't particularly advanced or efficient. It's actually known as a bubble sort because the elements that you want at the front of your list bubble up to the first element and so on. The first thing we need to do in order to implement this, however, is create a swap function, which will just swap the values of two elements. You might be thinking that the best thing to do would be to swap the actual pointers to the list item objects themselves. The reason that you don't want to do this is that it gets very complicated and, generally speaking, you don't want to get involved in moving around memory and pointers. So let's have a look at this swap function. It's going to be very simple. Um, we'll declare it first here and we'll take two of our list items and we'll implement it simply so the first thing we want to do is we'll save the value from A and so we take the data and then we set B's uh, sorry, we set A's data to now point to be, to be the same as B's data and then we set B's data to be equal to the old A value and the reason for that is obviously we can't just say B data is equal to A data um, because we've changed what uh, the value of A data is here so that's why we had to use that temporary value so let's just go and verify that that's working we've got our three elements here and we'll say um, let's remove this which is from our find code testing just comment that out um, there and instead of that we will swap a b and actually we'll move that up here before print statement and so now if we've swapped if we've created a list of a b c and we've swapped them we should get the values four then two then six test that uh, of course remember we're using pointers to our objects and, and here we go as predicted four two six so that's very good so now we're going to look at doing our sort and for the sake of argument we'll say that we'll sort from lowest to highest but you'll see how easy it is to customize that so sort ascending and we'll just take a list item which we will assume to be the first node oops the first node in our list and now we will define our method here and we'll make use of our swap And so what we need to do is to iterate through all the items in the list. Now, the, we've actually done this before, and I'll show you in our find. This loop went through every item. Of course, that one used first, so for the sake of consistency, we'll rename this to first as well. And there we have it. And now what we want to do is we want to say if i, which is the current element, the data, so actually the first thing we want to do is to check if there's a next element. If it's null, we're at the end, so we want to break out of our loop. Otherwise, if idle value, oops, idle data is greater than i next data. So that's saying if this element has a higher data value than the next element, we want to swap i data, oops, swap i, sorry, with i next. And we'll continue through the list. And so that will go through once and it will make one pass. And so it'll move at most each element once. But of course, each element may be more than one position out of the way. So we need to add a flag 
which we'll set to false. And then we will enclose our loop in another loop. This time we'll use a while loop. And we'll say while finished is false. Okay. And if we get the indentation correct, and just check that this is building so far, which it is. And then we need another flag, moved element, which we'll set to false. And this becomes true if we perform our swap. And we will continue until we get out of our inner loop. And then we will say if moved element equals false, finished equals false as well. Uh, sorry, finished equals true. And so that means when we can pass through all our elements, and we can't find any case where the current element is worth more than the next element, we'll get here, moved element will have remained false, we'll set to finished, and then we'll leave our loop. You could do this another way without the finished flag, you might write this to break out of the outer loop, and just make this an infinite loop while true. Both of those are perfectly good, uh, it's up to you which style you find fits you better. The other thing missing is at the beginning of each loop, uh, we want to make sure that moved element is false. Otherwise, once it's been set to true, it can never be set back. So actually we can move our declaration within this loop since we're not going to depend on it. And so now we can move, uh, we can call our sort ascending. So we'll do it after our swap so we know everything is out of order. And call that on A. And here we go. We can see, so we know as the programs run, we've got two, four, six, the elements have come out in order. And let's just have a quick look. Um, if we don't call sort, uh, don't call sort, we were getting, just to remind you, four, two, six. So we can close that. Let's put sort sending back in and let's change it now, just to see how you can use different sort criteria. And this time we'll do sort descending. So change this this and we'll change this sign to be the other way around so now we want to find every case where a current element is lower than the next element as opposed to greater and so we run again and we should get now six four and two there we go and of course if we wanted to put more elements in we'd be perfectly uh, able to do so um, for example we'll just throw in a couple more make uh, a D, we'll give this a value of 1, and we'll throw in an E, which will give a value of like, 10, and we'll just link those in, so we link C now to the element before it is B, and the element after it is D. If you can't remember how this link method works, go back a couple of videos and you'll see, whoops, uh, you'll see how that's done. And then we also want to link D to C and E. And we can remove our swap. Um, and instead we can just you know, jumble this up as much as we want. So we've got 4, 2, 6, 1, uh, 10. So and we're going to sort it descending. So we should get, uh, what do we get? 10, 6, 4, 2, 1 instead. So we'll run that. Uh, whoops, of course, E, 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 so yes, now we'll run that, and there we go, 10, 6, 4, 2, 1, and just to really drive home the point, switch this sign back, we won't change the method name, uh, so now it's going to be out of date, but we'll get 1, 2, 4, 6, 10, and you might be wondering, is there an easier way, well, there is, if you made a method here called compare, And you set true. Sorry, compare is equal to true. And let's say we pass in i data and i next data. This is a sort of a bit a nicer pattern to do this. So then we can just change this to a generalized sort. And we'll remove that. And there. 
and we'll declare our compare. So void compare and a and b. As you can see, we've got there. So void compare. Say if this um, return true, else return false. Um, you can actually write this. Uh, sorry, this should be bool. Um, whoops. And so should the okay. declaration. And I want to say if a data is greater than b. Well, actually. We're just using the integer values. So if a is greater than b, return true, so return false. This construction can actually be written even more simply as this: return a is greater than b. So let's just quickly consider that in case it's not obvious to you. Um, the value here is uh, a boolean value anyway, because that's what the output. Uh, or the input for an if statement is. So if we're saying if a is greater than b, what we're saying is if true, do this, else, do this. And of course, if you read that correctly, then you have if this condition is true, return true. So you may as well just return that condition directly. If it's not true, it will return false. Um, and so we can now just run this if compare is true, which of course is the same as saying if compare. We got our 1, 2, 4, 6, 10. And then we can just go straight to this small function, swap around our values, go the opposite way. So hopefully that's fairly straightforward um, and you don't have too many problems with that. Of course, if you do, put a message below the video and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.